Hi, and welcome to The Flute Show with Florence Estrin here on virtualsheetmusic.com. I'm Robert Estrin, good to have you. We have a viewer question today. How do you approach trills on the flute? This is an excellent question. Not that long ago, I did a trill video on piano, and there are many parallels between working on trills on the P board as well as wind instruments. But you're going to find some real insights that'll translate to your instrument. Thank you so much, Florence, and let's hear about trills on the flute. Thank you, Robert. Uh, well, you know, I want to show today uh, basically a flute trill warm up. Uh, and I, I like to call it that because I hate to think of it as practicing trills because when I was given this, and I was given this by your uncle, Harvey Estrin, one of the great flute teachers of all time, uh, he showed me this exercise and he called it a flute warm-up exercise. And that gave me the feeling of, oh, it was just to keep my fingers relaxed and get them moving and doing things in a relaxed way. And uh, it's interesting because this was just one of the warm-ups I did every day, year in, year out. And it was several years later, probably 10 years later, I was playing a rehearsal of Mendelssohn's Italian Symphony. And we got to a part in, in uh, the slow movement, and there's a flute solo, and I played it, and... <laughs> And after I played that, uh, there was a, a, a pause in the rehearsal, the conductor's working with the strings, and the first doe was, says to me, how do you do that? And I'm like, what, what are you talking about? She said, that's so hard, how do you do that? You, your two fingers doing that? And I was like, uh, I just, yeah, well, and then I thought about it, it's like, well, I've been practicing this in my flute trill exercise for about 10 years, every day, and so I thought I'd share the exercise, and uh, there's a visual of this, and basically, it's, um, all the trills are half-step half trills, except for the B to C sharp, which is in that Mendelssohn excerpt, so um, what's great about it is that, it, you know, you just try to be relaxed, and when you're thinking in terms of playing a trill, instead of just thinking of going back and forth between the notes, just take your time and think of it in groups of three and keep your fingers more even. So that's a really good way to practice it. Start slowly thinking threes and then after a while you don't have to be thinking about what you know, you're not thinking a pattern so much, but you just can get your fingers working. So the exercise is as such. So it kind of covers all the different combinations? Well, not every single trill that exists on the flute, but it covers every finger pretty much that you might be using one at a time or 
two at a time. Uh, there, there are some other more complicated trills in the third octave, but this is just a really great way to get your fingers used to trilling. And because you, you do it in such a way where you can either measure it in terms of time so that you're concentrating on how you end your trill, or not, especially when you're starting, don't worry about that so much, just try to keep it even. Um, I remember when I was in college and we were reading through uh, a, an overture in, in orchestra and the whole time there was a lot of trills going on uh, and the first clarinetist was playing these trills and, and she was a good friend of mine and the whole time I'm thinking, why is she doing that? Because some trills would be, you know, labored and others would be as fast as she could possibly play them. And it just was all within the same tempo of music. So it sounded really silly. You know, it was just wrong that they would not be the same. And it was kind of funny because right after the rehearsal, she comes to me, she's like, did you hear how fast I did this particular trill? And I'm like, yeah, but it didn't work because then your other trills weren't matching that trill. And she went, Oh, <laughs> and, and then she started thinking about how to practice her trills so that instead of just trying to be, as a matter of fact, when she was trilling very, very fast, it sounded kind of maniacal, like, you know, and not even. And so, yeah, it's not a matter of just how fast you play a trill. You want to really make sure it works with the, the tempo of the music and it's consistent with the other trills in that same tempo. Exactly. I think the mistake a lot of people make when they see trills, they think it's just like some fluttering of notes but they don't realize that it's really just music and it's just a shorthand instead of having to write out all those notes. Right, right. So exactly. if you think of it that way. Right. Well, that's a really interesting technique. I really appreciate that. And we thank the viewers for the questions. Keep them coming in here at the Flute Show. Florence Estrin, I'm Robert Estrin. Thanks for joining us here on virtualsheetmusic.com. <laughs>